Zijn geen idee, als jij soms geen maten. Net zoals je daar eens vertelt als je lekker leert. Show us, teach us, bring it all together. Penny our friend here at E. Hello and welcome to Show Me How. I'm Gloria Bastos. Today we're working with fabric paints and printing blocks to create unique designs and patterns that can be printed in a repeat pattern over and over again. My guest today is Melanie Brummer and she's not only a fabric artist, but she's also written a book on fabric printing and dyeing. Melanie, what sparked off this interest? Uh, in 1993, I was very unhappy in the job that I was doing. I used to be a croupier, yes. and I was dating a guy who was a screen printer, and he suggested that maybe we make some t-shirts that we could sell at the flea market. Yes. Um, and I started experimenting with a few tie-dye t-shirts. They sold very well, and eventually by 1998, I was manufacturing more than 100 garments wow. a week that I would sell on the weekends. Fantastic. In our first project, we'll be carving this unique liner printing block, which we'll use later on to create art on canvas. It's an accurate way of repeating the same pattern, maybe using different colors and even applying it on different surfaces, but achieving a uniform look. We'll be using a variety of interesting tools and techniques to create the liner block. Melanie, how do we achieve this rather intricate design? Well, it's simpler than you might think. Really? Yes. Okay. You start with a plain rubber mat like this. These are available for many fine art shops. Is there a, a, a name to this or can we just go and buy rubber mats? You know what, they normally sell it as lino. Okay. Um, that's the traditional old name for the, the linoleum based product that okay. you used to get. Um, they've now developed this lovely rubbery product which mm -hmm. is great. It's butter soft to carve and it's actually much easier to work with in oh, the old fashioned Oh lovely. Fashion okay. And you may find in the stores they look a little bit different. This one's got a green uh, finish on it. Some of it's just plain rubber like this. They all do the same job. Okay. Well, as long as we can find it in the craft shops, then we're okay. Absolutely. <laughs> then, I know this pattern looks very interesting. It does. But the way I built it was actually very, very simple. Okay. And I rely on old-fashioned tools like these French curves. And my father was an architect, so these are his old circle-making okay. tools that I use. And, and that's what I use to shape the blocks. So, this was the first one that we're going to do. That's to achieve this... Yes. Pink print on Pink here. Pink print there. Okay. And all I did was to take the French curve, place it within the square. I obviously just squared it up a little bit to give me some guidelines to work within. That and is so clever. Yeah, and I mean, you don't have to be able to draw. I always have crafters in my class who say to me, yeah, but I can't draw. That's right, yes. And you really don't have to be able to draw. So I would just get the basic um, shape onto there. Then for this section here, I just used another piece of the French curve. What are you drawing now? That's the inside. Okay. The cut okay. Out. All right. Yeah. I see that. And this is another thing that I always say to my students because they see this in the first class and they all want to make this. Yes. And and that's very very complicated. A simple shape like this mm -hmm. is as relevant. Um, and can create as powerful a print as the very intricate one. Well, here in your canvas, we've actually got uh, the, the, the plain heart is a much stronger design and the very intricate one is almost a background uh, yes. watermark, yes. but it works very, very well. Yes. Yeah. So, simple as that, one, two, three, you've got it shaped. And this particular one, you don't even need to know how to use your carving tools. Okay. I just cut it out with a craft knife. So you, right. you literally just carve it out like this. I see. So you wouldn't use those fancy all-purpose scissors or something like that? No. Okay. No, I would just use carv old-fashioned carving knife. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you need to put it onto a protective surface before you start, or do you do it freehand, lift it up like that? Um, I would work on, a, on a, one of those self-healing rubber mats yes. to, to just get into the groove. Okay. And then I'm, I literally neaten it up by hand as if I'm eating just an apple or something. Just to neaten the edges. Or okay. like that, yeah. Perfect. Then, um, when you're actually doing the carving with the carving tool, I recommend that you don't work on your kitchen counter. Okay. Because sometimes the blade slips. And, and you gouge you it out. Yes, yes. I learned that the hard way. Now, are these carving um, tools the same as the carving tools you use on soft wood? Yes. Okay. Yes. Available again in your craft stores. Yes, yes. And most of my students, when I go into a class, they look at me and they go, oh, I've got a set of those in my garage at home. I've never known what well, to do. Well, I have them. a set and I've never <laughs> used them. So there you go. Okay. Well, now I'm going to teach you how. Okay. So before we start with the carving tools, we need to, sh I need to show you how we created the intricate block. And there again, 
people say, but that's so complicated. It I could looks never do that. so complicated. And all I did was this. Oh, there you go. Your I circles. took the circle making tool. Yes. And you draw the shapes in. And I use different sizes so mm -hmm. that it gets a nice ornate look. Okay. And you position them randomly, I suppose. Yes, well, you start off randomly, and then the idea is to kind of fill in the spaces. Okay. So when it starts to get like this, then you just shift the tool around and see which shape is big enough to fit nicely in to there. To fit the space, yes. Then when you get here and it's very small, then you shift to a smaller one. Okay. And in that way, you can fill up the whole space. So if we look at this, this is actually a repeat pattern. It's, it's flowers that have been in different sizes, but flowers that have been carved out over and over yes. and over again. Yes. And it's fascinating. I mean, if I look Thank at the finished, finished effect, it's so intricate. Now I'm dying to see how you carve this and how you finish drawing all the lovely shaped petals. Okay, well, that again is very simple. And I just use a ruler. Okay. So I just segmented into however many s petals yes. you want. So some of them I do six, some of them I do eight, just so that it, it gives it variety, so that okay. it doesn't start looking too contrived. So it looks like something You natural. know, what, what is fascinating me about this is the fact that it looks so complicated, but using the correct tools, it's actually not that difficult to achieve. I suppose if you go for more intricate freehand patterns, then it's a problem. But would you always, would you sometimes copy a pattern that you found on the internet or that you found in a book? Um, I do sometimes. My favorite point of reference for lino is actually a children's coloring in book. Oh, because right. those simple line drawings yes. are great to use. Yeah. And then I would just transfer it on using old fashioned carbon paper. Okay. Um, most of my designs come out of my head and I work with tools like this. Lovely. Believe it or not, I also can't draw. Okay. Well, I, I would never say so. I have very little drawing ability. <laughs> Um, I cannot draw what I see, and I do everything fiddling Using with little tools, tools like Perfect. this. Yeah. Show me how you're going to carve that, because I okay. think we're all dying to see so it. So, I'm just going to have a small conversation around the different tools, because most people take their tools out of the box and they're very overwhelmed. Yes. So, essentially you get two different kinds. This is a fixed handle with a fixed blade, mm -hmm. and you'll get a set of them. Yes. Then this one is a handle with interchangeable okay. blades. So you use the stick to pop the blade out the front, mm -hmm. and then you can put another blade in, That's whichever very blade clever. you'd like very to clever. use. Yeah. And you get five, three different shaped blades. So there's a straight blade, yes. which you use for ending off things with. Okay. Um, then you get a rounded scoop, yes. which is great for clearing big areas. Mm -hmm. Let me just have a look at that. Oh, I see. I see yeah. exactly what you're referring to. Yeah. Okay. And they normally put two sizes in a box. So there's a big one and a small okay. one, depending on the size of the project. And then you get a V-shaped blade. Okay. And the V-shaped blade makes deep, sharp cuts. And right. the V-shape is, is ideal for outlining and doing small, finicky okay. stuff like this. So right. for this project, I'm going to do it with the small V-shaped blade. Okay. That's to start your deep gouging. Yes. Okay. Yes. To outline everything. With. And the biggest challenge with the tool is learning to not cut your hands. Oh, right. Okay. okay. I didn't realize there was that danger. <laughs> yeah. Because what may happens, to, it's intuitive to work like this. Yes. Then the blade slips and, and it, it into digs your into hand. your finger mm -hmm. and you've got a rather nasty little deep cut. Yes. That when you wash dishes is going to burn like okay. mad. So the first thing I teach my students is how to control it by keeping the supporting hand behind the leading blade. You hold the tool like this in your okay. hand, and then you just carve along the lines. I see. And you have pretty good control over that. Well, that comes with practice. Okay. Many so initially you can expect to, to slip and to gouge. Yes, okay. yes. And some students will even find in the beginning that it's, it's quite difficult to get the gouge going. Mm -hmm. What happens is if you put the blade in at a particular angle, nothing happens. Okay. Um, and then you'll find somewhere you'll figure out what the angle is, and then suddenly it runs. It, it very all falls easy. into place. Yes. Okay. So, um, so, so do you only cut out the design of the heart once you've finished all your carving? Yes. All right. If I wanted more space to cut out these spaces here between the shapes, I would use a, a bigger blade. 
Are you using that round one that you were telling no, me about? No, no. And on this, this particular block, I only use the V-shaped okay. blades because there's just not enough space. The rounded blade, maybe I should uh, demonstrate it on something. I'd, I'd love to see that. Gives you big sweeping cuts. I see. So if you're doing freehand stuff that's or, got or lots big of designs. flowing. Okay. So the small, the small Vs give you a more accurate and more intricate type of, of carving. Yes. The, the round one will give you flowing motion. So it's, it's very much a repetition of what you've been showing Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Using the different tools to achieve the different effects. Yes. And ultimately, when you've finished carving out um, the round shapes, then you start doing the pattern around the petals, yes. the little grooves. Yes. And, and to finish it off, or is it very much the same thing over and it's over It's the and same over? thing over and over again. Okay. And, and it's really not very difficult. The, the trickiest part possibly with this one for me was shaping the outside of the petal because you've got to go back yes. and just round off each corner like that. Yes, yes, yes. And then what I also did just for a little bit of personality was to gouge into the centers like that. I'm to sure give it a bit of depth. Here. Yes. So that when you depth. print, the color will be more concentrated in the middle. Well, there. there won't be color there at all. If you look here, it gives us it gives us the center that look in the center. Oh, of the I flower. see. So you've actually created a lighter yes. a lighter center. Yes. Very very interesting. How long would it take you to carve a block like this? This one took me two days. Two days. But now a beginner like me is going to take at least double that. The the simple one. Yes. I carved in two. Uh, like five minutes. Okay. It was done. So that's the way to start. Start with a simple pattern yes. and after that become more adventurous yes. and go on to your yes. intricate ones. Having said that, this one I have printed thousands of times in dozens of different colors on many different things. Lovely. So I've used it to print birthday cards, wrapping paper, canvases, fabric, you name it. I've so it's it worth this. the effort uh, that you put into the original block because you can just use it to repeat the same pattern Absolutely. over and over. Lovely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. In the next project, we'll be using the liner block that we made earlier on to print bright contemporary art on canvas and on fabric. Melanie, I can't wait to get my hands dirty. This looks so interesting. Where do we get started? All right. First of all, we wadge up a towel Yes. And we put it into the space underneath the canvas. It just means that when we put the block onto the canvas and we put some pressure on, we've got good registration. Everything touches Excellent. and the canvas doesn't sag completely away. Right, okay. So we're going to start first with the ornate block. You can see on here that it's the print that is underneath. Oh, yes. And I'm just going to show you how to get the ink onto the block. So we now, start. What ink are you using? This is just normal fabric paint. Okay. I call it ink habitually, but it really is just plain fabric okay. paint. Fab and, and fabric fa paint is available in all shades and all yes. colors in the craft yes. stores. Okay, lovely. And any brand will do. <coughs> so it's, it's not a, a new uh, medium, it's just a new way of applying it to okay. craft. So as you can see here, I'm getting a thin coating of the paint onto the sponge roller. Mm -hmm. And there are two things that people do that are not ideal. The first is they put pressure on the sponge. Yes. It sucks up too much ink. Okay. And then your prints become very messy. The second thing that's very intuitive and particularly with children is they want to scoop. Yes, that's true. And that's also going to make very messy prints. Okay. So the idea is to get a very thin, even coating of ink onto your sponge. All right. If I can just, um, the way that I see this is it's very similar to the potato prints that we made when we were children, am yes. I right? Where the design is actually standing out from the background. Yes. So when we apply the paint, we, are we just going to skim the surface on yes. top of the design? So we're not yes. going to go in between and fill in all the grooves no. and all of that? No, no. Okay. I get it. And that's, that's exactly how the pattern is formed. I see. So you want to spread the paint it looks very thin when you do it on it there. It is quite thin. This particular brand of paint appears to be quite translucent. Okay. And that varies from one brand to the other and one, from one color to the other. So you'll see I've worked in both directions. Okay. To get the ink on. And then what I've learned from my experience is that your first print always looks different to subsequent prints. Okay. Now, if you're only going to print one item, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do a repeat pattern, say along a border on a curtain or yes. something, then that first print will stick out like an eyesore. I see. And so the others will be much softer. Yes. Okay. So to prevent that from happening, I always run a test print, and that's what the phone book is for. All right. Because <laughs> it's convenient and easy. I'm sure that our phone book provider didn't envisage <laughs> their books being used like this, but... Well, all my students 
friends always say to me, now I know what to do with those old phone books <laughs> that I don't know where to throw. But you know what? My immediate reaction would be that you've now taken all the paint off. Yes, so we're going to ink it up again. Oh, okay. But now you can also look over here yes. to make sure that you've got ink on the whole of the of Fair the enough. But it looks very neat on this. Yes. So that was just a test. So you weren't taking off excess paint as such. You were just testing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I'm going to move it to a clean page. Mm -hmm. Now the reason for that is we've got ink all around here when we inked up the yes. first time. If you then put the block back down onto that same space, you get ink on the back of the block. Oh, right. Then as you're working, yes. you've got ink on your hands, and on then the you'll get it on your project, your clothes, and, and eventually it all looks like a that's dog's true. breakfast. That's true. So I just want to make sure that we've got a clean... So every time you print, you have to ink up. Yes. Now, you know what I like about the lino block is the fact that t what you were saying, in this case, if this is for a child's room, you could, you could make artwork, but you could do the repeat pattern either on a duvet or on curtain, so yes. you can get a uniform look. I suppose you could even print onto a lampshade yes. with a smaller design, perhaps. Absolutely, and that's Very what I find magical about it, because if you want to match your entire home, it's totally doable with yes. this technique. And obviously, you would work with whatever color scheme works for you and whatever, yes. whatever design works for yes. you. So you're actually able to make something that's entirely uniquely yours. Now, I'm doing the print that you see here on this other canvas. Okay, let me just show and the viewers. Just so that, because a lot of people also think that the print has to sit in the middle of the work. Yes. And I love to th see things spill off the edge of the canvas. Okay. And as you can see, I'm printing here off the edge. So this is a rubber roller. You're just yes. applying pressure on yep. that. That's just making sure that every single little surface actually touches with the canvas. Okay. Then I'm just quickly going to turn a fresh page and come back here and there's the first print. I'm going to ink this one up. Okay. While you do the the solid heart. Can we okay. do that? Absolutely. Okay. Because I'm dying to get my hands dirty. <laughs> I said I would so let's see how that goes. And I hope that um, I can achieve the same beautiful effect that you have. It doesn't sure actually look to. very complicated. No, I think difficult. making the liner block is, is much um, more complex than actually printing off it. Does that look right, Melanie? Does that look like it's got looks enough good. ink? Looks good. Maybe just here? Yeah, there we go. All good. Okay, fantastic. This technique is very simple. I do it with kids all the time. Do so you? Yeah. Do you actually get children to print their own um, um, uh, liner blocks as well to, yes. to make their yes. own? Really? Kids absolutely love these processes. Um, so I'm pressing it to make sure that it goes onto yes. every surface. Yes. Now what I did do that I shouldn't have done is I, I positioned it straight on and then I ch decided to shift it. So I've got a little bit of a mess on the sides, but I'm sure that it won't be noticeable once the whole design is printed on. Well, when I do something like that, I work with it. Okay. So I would, if the mess is, is too noticeable when you finish, then I would just put more prints on. Okay. I would yes. cover it up with something. Okay, now here is a good example of being impatient and I didn't press it down properly on that yes. side. But yes. again, it's quite a forgiving design, so maybe I'll angle my solid one to cover a little bit Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. And the other thing I always say to my students is you actually learn more from your errors True. than from perfection. You won't do that again. That's it. That's exactly right. Okay, so, so your first one was just to clean it off and to yes. do the test. And now we... Now you're doing the real McCoy. Yeah. Now, um, we're printing onto, onto fabric on canvas, but what other surfaces could you use this on? I've worked on leather, uh -huh. wood, With candles. fabric paint? Yes. Okay. Um, fabric paint is essentially an acrylic, yes. and all acrylics work very much the same okay. way. Um, and Although you do get a special leather ink, when we worked for the fashion and decor industries, I've, I've worked with leather ink onto leather. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, I just use an acrylic base ink on almost everything. It's a very robust product and it, yes. it works on any porous surface. What about curing it? Because I know fabric paint needs to be cured. Yes. Now, how, whether you cure it or not and how you cure it is going to, I always say, consider the end use. 
yes. and then work back from there. Okay. So this does not need to be cured because it's going to go on a wall, you're never going to wash that's it. That's true. If you're printing a t-shirt that's going to go into the wash once a week, yes. then it certainly needs to be cured. And then stick to the, manufa the manufacturer's specification on the bottle. Okay, of so, the paint. Yes, so mm -hmm. this particular one I think will probably say something like um, iron for six minutes at 140 degrees. Okay. So, but I always say consider your end use first. Fair enough. So yep. if it's something that's not going to get any washing, don't overthink it. Yes. If it's something that needs to be very robust. Um, then you're definitely then going to, yeah. to be careful of that. I'm going to angle it slightly differently to cover up my mess there. And I think that that could work. It's give lovely to see you play. Give us an interesting end result. Tell me something. What do we do? How do we get the ink and the paint off these uh, lino blocks? When you've finished printing, mm -hmm. you just drop it into a bucket of water. Yes. And then you just, with a soft scrubbing brush, you just scrub it clean. Okay. Um, and I actually find this rubber is great to work with because if you're in a class where you've got lots of students want to use the same liner block, then you just clean it off, wipe it down with a towel, and you're ready to go. Okay. Again. Perfect. I think this is good enough to take off. Am it's I lovely. right? Okay. Wonderful. Now you well said. Done. Okay, there you go. Do you know what I think the problem is on this side here? Is that I actually don't have enough... Um, padding at the back. Yeah, so yes. every time I'm pressing, the, the, the canvas is actually shifting. Yes. And that is what's causing that. But now that. you've also seen the logic behind putting the Absolutely. padding into the back. Absolutely. You also get those canvases that have a hard surface on the top. Yes. I suppose that would be ideal for this kind of, yes. of design. Yes. They are a bit heavier and a bit more expensive, but uh, also an ideal way. Ideally for the, the liner, you do want some padding. That's what the blanket is for. When we, when we print on fabric, you want some padding because it just gives you even better registration. Yes. There's a little bit of give. Of give. Mm -hmm. Now, what about children playing with this and they get the, the fabric paint all over their clothes? Does, does that wash out if you haven't cured it? Uh, sometimes if you're very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of the colours. Okay. So when I have students come to my class, I always say to them, wear old clothes. Yes, or Be wear ready an to apron get. or something Well, like I give that. them aprons as well. Yes. Um, because, uh, and I also find that in a class situation, that's great for getting everybody to just relax and be themselves true, and true. have a lot of fun. I, I tend to be quite messy, so I'm one of those that needs protective clothing. Yes. Although I must say it didn't happen this time. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Show Me How was proudly colored by PNA, suppliers of stationery, books, arts and crafts. PNA, color your world. PNA. Products available in store at PNA. Visit www.pna.co.za for further information. Yeah.